Ben Coleman, one of your hosts for the Florida Aviation Network. And we're here at the Florida Air Museum at the 44th Annual Sun and Fun International Convention and Fly-In. And as usual, we have uh, some dynamic folks here walking around the campus at all times. And there's so much going on that's a good buzz in aviation. Uh, with, with all the opportunities we have to impact, uh, positive impact on life, uh, this is why it's so good to have folks that uh, we regard them as kind of angels, uh, in, if you will. And speaking of angels and angel flight, Pleasure, Steve, ben. thank you so much. Steve Perilla and uh, Keith, Keith Evans. Evans. Nice to meet you. Keith, uh, you're a top pilot. Yes, sir. Steve, you help run the Southeast organization. I do. Uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on with angel flight in the Southeast, primarily, and uh, actually nationwide. I know you, you have a tap on the nationwide market, but tell us what's going on. Sure. So, as you know, we're made up of about 700 pilots that donate their time, fuel, and airplane to be able to fly people with unusual diseases and uh, fly them as many times as they need to be able to go get that help that they need, even if it's hundreds of miles away. And pilots like Keith will be able to take those people and bring them in, in safety and comfort to the uh, medical help that they've got to get. And uh, it's been a great year for us. The diseases are usually contained. That's one thing that uh, I know once one of the folks asked me, he says, these guys that fly angel flights, the patients, are, is there anything contagious or anything? I says, no, they're, they're, they're well contained. Don't worry about it. So explain a little bit about that to put the folks at ease that I know had questions about. Good, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, so we uh, at Angel Flight Southeast, the um, offices screen these calls uh, to be able to decide if it's a, an appropriate uh, person to be able to bring on board. You mentioned earlier that you're doing air ambulance work. Well, we don't have uh, doctors and nurses on board and don't have medical equipment, so we need to make sure that they're stable and that it's a type of disease or an illness that they are ambulatory. They're able to climb up onto the wing of one of our airplanes being a low wing or mm -hmm. be able to duck under a wing and, and, and get in under a, a high wing airplane. And that yes, they don't have any uh, you know, contagious diseases that would cause an issue for the pilot. So that's part of what our job is as care traffic controllers to be able to make sure that it's an appropriate flight. I like the term care traffic controllers. Yeah, we uh, coined that phrase. I like that, it has <laughs> got a ring to it. And uh, missions, uh, Keith, you, you have, what type of, what, what would be a typical mission for you? Well, you know, I fly um, whoever's in need. Some of the hardest missions that I fly, um, we were talking about ambulatory to be able to get into an airplane. Some of the biggest angels that I've met is mothers. I've seen mothers carry 16 year old kids that were just had diseases that had them at about 80 pounds pick them up and carry them into the airplane wow. just to make sure they can get on that flight. Some of the hardest missions that we fly is when we go up to North Carolina to Duke University to take babies up there for open, open heart surgeries and things of that nature. So a lot of them are very, very difficult. But I will encourage a lot of pilots out there. It's something that is so fulfilling. When I first started it in 1994, I was flying just around to go get a hamburger or just flying because I love to fly. Mm -hmm. And when I ran into Angel Flight and started flying that, it brings a purpose to flying an aircraft because so many of us have that passion to fly. Mm -hmm. And instead of just going up just to get in the air, knowing that I can get in an aircraft and help someone possibly save their life or help them through a difficult situation mm -hmm. is a wonderful feeling. So I do encourage people with pilot's licenses to get involved with Angel Flight because it will change their life. It really, truly will. I, I have no doubt. And I, I would love to, at some point in time, have the time to devote. <laughs> and I would love, as you know, I'm a, a CB uh, mm -hmm. infectionado. And CB is slow, <laughs> but it's a, it's still making way through. The, uh, and I'm sure that, mm -hmm. uh, that there would be a, a need, or uh, I'd love to be one of your cadre of We'd of, love to have you, Ben. Yes. Even if you could do one a year, at that that's tremendous help. And uh, 100 miles an hour, uh, I mean, as a crow flies, you can cover some distance. Sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, the amphib aspect of the CB is you land to land, and it's mm -hmm. somewhat easy to get in and out of. So uh, mm -hmm. it, I think it would be useful. But the uh, what is the, 
And you mentioned you had over 700 pilots? 700 in the southeast alone, yes. Wow. And how do you manage that, Steve? Because that's, I mean, that's, that's a lot of folks to keep track of. Do you have like a central hub or how do you keep track of your, of your, uh, of your operation? Yeah, it's, it's primarily software driven where we're able to keep a database of those pilots. Um, they affirm their currency. They affirm that they've got insurance. They've, they affirm that, that uh, you know, they're compliant in, in all the manner. And uh, we're able to not only track it through the, the software um, and book those flights, but we can actually even watch the flights real time on Flight Explorer to see if there's any issues such as weather, that mm -hmm. type of thing, where two pilots might be coming together, be able to drop somebody off and pick them up for the next leg. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a really outstanding software that we have to be able to run it. Of course, our talented care traffic controllers uh, working that software as well. Where is your headquarters? So in the southeast, we're in Leesburg, Florida, just uh, an hour's drive north of Orlando, and we connect into uh, six of the other Angel flights to be um, what's called the Air Charity Network, which is the largest um, volunteer organization that are dedicated to medical flights mm -hmm. like ours. Steve uh, and, and Keith, do yes. you see this uh, growing as far as the, the attention uh, to bringing aircraft in to serve a purpose, a useful, helpful purpose for the medical community. Mm -hmm. Is it growing? Has it plateaued? Is it shrinking? What, what's, what's the dynamics right now, the status mm -hmm. of the Angel Flight mission? We've seen it change um, is probably the best way to, to decide. The demand is very consistent and, uh, and, and over the years we've, we've been, you know, thousands of flights a year that, that are taking place and uh, as particularly cancer, as uh, the doctors and, and nurses have, have, and medicine has gotten better to be able to cure cancer uh, and maybe the more common ones, then there are less common ones that are starting to get more attention mm -hmm. and therefore uh, people that are getting stage three, stage four cancer in something unusual, well, those uh, new facilities and, and universities are taking on uh, new trials and that's creating new quote unquote business for us where we're able to take them, you know, and, and bring them other places. So um, I think the demand's gonna be there, you know, as, as long as there's illness and, and uh, we're there to meet it. How is your funding? What can we do to help ensure that you are able to do what you do? Uh, advertisers, sponsorship, uh, what, how do you do this? Thank you. So the primary funding is, is through generous pilots like, like Heath, where he's able to donate his time and his fuel and his airplane. But then also, Keith tends to be one of the people that actually goes out and raises dollars for us as, as well. And uh, I'll let him tell you about a, a couple of the things that he does for us. Is there some kind of raffle going on? Oh, is you want to about the raffle? Tell about a raffle. <laughs> Tell us about a raffle. Sure. So uh, the folks at Stallion 51 are, are very generous to us, and uh, they are able to give us a one-hour flight with um, one-hour ground school and one-hour dual instruction in a P-51 Mustang, and it's uh, worth $3,500, and you can get a ticket for only $20. Thank you very much to the Florida Aviation Network for making a, a great commercial for us as well to be able to get the word out. It's, it's the least that we can do to help. We also go to a lot of corporations, and I get donations from corporations. We've been very, very successful at doing that. One is Homestar Financial. I'm working with another company called Archer Tactical. I'm working with another medical supply company. And at the end of every year, they're looking for a charity to donate to. And we've been very, very lucky to get in. And after they find out about Angel Flight, we've been able to get some significant donations that help out a lot. We also run a lot of poker runs with the motorcycle community mm -hmm. to raise money there. Mm -hmm. We have two going on this year that's going to help raise money. And all of those monies are just for the um, administrative part. None of the pilots get any of this money. This money is, is, is for Steve to be able to run the operation, which he does an amazing job with the staff that he has right now. Mm -hmm. From where were we, at, we were at five years ago to where we're at with Steve right now, we're not missing any flights. We're saving a lot of lives. And it's because of the automation that he's put in place and everything else. And it's been, uh, I mean, I can't say enough great things about him being in the position that he's in. He's helped grow it. And, and it's, it's been wonderful, it really has. 
Well, it's and it's refreshing to see that it's uh, it's an activity. Uh, you know, my former background as a Fed, okay. uh, I like to see the the, the there's a a rational uh, understanding that this is a a useful cause, mm -hmm. and they don't uh, come down on you trying to claim somebody's getting something compensation and right. you're doing something illegal and that. I mean, you have a very, very good relationship with the uh, Federal Aviation Administration, mm -hmm. and they understand what you are doing and how it's good for the industry. It's good for uh, for everyone. The FAA is very supportive of us. Of course, we even have uh, pilots that are that are working for the FAA. But uh, whenever there is some sort of issue or, or new. Um, regulation or something like that, they reach out and we have a great relationship with the FAA. And if you talk to air traffic controller before you take off when you're in the air and you let them know that you have a patient that is in need, and gen you know, that you have to handle gently, they will clear a flight path out for you yeah. so that you can get to your destination in, in a, uh, the right amount of time to get there. That's good. You know, I've had people that had a brain tumor. You couldn't fly re really high. I've got clearance to fly all the way to Miami at 1,000 feet in Navajo. I mean, and they watched me the whole time. And when I got to the airport, I was met with an ambulance, and they took the child and the kids alive today. That's great. You know, and it was a, it, it, it was a, it was a situation where I was at work and I, I received a phone call from speaking at an event. And somebody at the event said, this child needs to get there immediately, and they have no other way to get there. The mother was in tears. Steve and the organization was able to contact the doctor, get clearance for me to fly, get the altitude that I could fly at. I contacted the FAA. They allowed me to fly at a low altitude to get there. There was no nurse or anything in the airplane. Got there, the child's alive today. Well, and it's, it, it's that type of success story that, mm -hmm. and, and like you say, it gives you a good reason to go fly in with a purpose. Correct. Rather than just going for the $100 hamburger, <laughs> or now it's a $400, $400 hamburger. $400 hamburger. I was going to uh, correct you there. <laughs> in 2017, we got a, a lot of extra purpose. Right. With Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Irma, and then Hurricane Maria. And, uh, you know, Hurricane Harvey and Irma were very, very busy for us. Uh, one of my favorite stories for Harvey was we had um, a hospital that had lost power in Beaumont and a couple of our pilots had, had uh, made their way out there looking for something to be able to help out with and um, when they got there they found out there was a premature baby in the hospital who was not going to make it through the night unless this baby was able to get this very special um, food you know that, that, uh, that the baby need uh, formula. And so the pilots got in their plane, they flew over to Waco, Texas, picked up 100 pounds of, of this formula, flew it back, saved the baby. Well, the story doesn't end there. When they get back, there's two military pilots standing there, and it's just getting dark, and the military pilots inform our pilots that there's another baby out in the flood zone. Same condition, needs the same formula. These two pilots grab the formula, get in their helicopter, put their night vision goggles <laughs> on, and fly out into the flood zone to be able to save the second baby. Wow. So fan fantastic. And, and we probably have a hundred of those type of stories that, that took place. And you know, uh, Steve, there are people that say, why, you got all of that trouble just for one baby. I said, well, yeah. Who would say that? <laughs> right. I know people ah. that, that think like that. I said, okay, it's one baby. About this, it was your baby. Yeah. Right. I mean, or maybe it was you uh -huh. when you were a baby. Yeah. It's it's so so important. Yeah. I mean, because they're so fixed on the yeah. numbers. Well, unless I'm going to impact a hundred people, I'm not going to waste my time. Right. Okay. Right. With an attitude like that, we don't want your time. Okay. Correct. Th well, there are some very very. Uh, I'm not going to use say demented. But uh, there's some pretty useless people in the world. Well, there's plenty of wonderful people in the <laughs> world too. We'll focus on them. Right. And, and that's that's where the positive energy of what's mm -hmm. going on with uh, with with Angel Flight mm -hmm. is is so so good and refreshing. Right. And we want thank you. And I think uh, I'm going to go out there and say, for the most part, in aviation, uh, it's the the integrity of the people. And there's a term that I haven't heard in quite a while: self policing. Okay. You probably are the or the worst possible nightmare for somebody in your organization that would do something that was either 
uh, not smart, not legal, not safe, you're going to shut them down in a heartbeat. You yeah. get rid of them. You weed them out. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I know you've had to make some hard decisions in your past, uh, people that have wanted to come do that, but they haven't had the right, uh, the right um, either attitude, mindset, or, or background to be able to contribute to what your mission is. Um, so it, it's it's uh, my hat is off to you. Thank you, thank you. It's the pilots. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to continue on with the hurricanes in, at uh, Irma, we did 50 or 60 flights over the weekend, landing at Key West when there were still fish on the runway, mm. <laughs> and and then Maria flying a thousand miles over ocean, having to you know in piston aircraft dropping into mm -hmm. Turks and Caicos or Dominican Republic to be able to refuel and going through their customs. And, and being able to manage that, that mm -hmm. process. Um, getting to one of the airports in Puerto Rico, where being told there were 6,000 gallons of aviation fuel ready for you, and when they got there, there wasn't any. Oh. And it turns out they were selling the aviation fuel to cars out the back, the back gate. Oh, no. Um, it, it, was, it was a whole nother universe for us to be able to make those flights and, and help the people of Puerto Rico and bring down insulin, bring down tetanus wow. shots, uh, pull people out that weren't getting the, the proper treatment for their dialysis because there was no power. So these people are supposed to get three hours of dialysis. They're getting one hour, toxic blood. And uh, not only are our regular pilots, but other people donated cash. So we were able to charter airplanes, fly down there with a 30 passenger jet, drop off all of this uh, material and pick up 32 people, uh, babies, that's why we're allowed to do that, <laughs> and, uh, and and fly 32 people out at a time to be able to get them to safety. So wow. um, Hurricane and Harvey, Irma, and then Maria was a whole other world for us. So we, 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 we thank everyone that was a, a part of, of doing those flights. It was a tremendous experience for us. Uh, Steve uh, and Keith, where are you set up here at Sun and Fun? Do you have a booth or a, a Our tent? good friends at Stallion 51, we're at the Corral. Excellent. Handing out yeah. postcards to be able to, to join the raffle for the P-51 flight. And how is the raffle coming along? I mean, really you haven't well. got any tickets left? <laughs> We've got a few <laughs> left. Not, uh, not many, not many. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but we, uh, and, and that is a very, very gracious uh, thing. Oh, yeah. Tom, uh, Lee is, uh, he's always been a real, mm -hmm. a real hard charger Absolutely. For, mm -hmm. for doing the, doing the right thing. Yep. And uh, the integrity that that group has. Is, is is second to none. Lee and Angela and KT are just fantastic mm -hmm. to us. Yep. And uh, I think we're going to be talking with them later on in the week. Uh, Good. And it, it's it's things like that 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 make hanging around uh, this atmosphere, this environment, mm -hmm. and we always look forward to seeing Sun and Fun come because typically I get to see you at least once a year. That's right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I could go up to Leesburg and drop come in on, on you, over. have please, a cup of coffee, uh, but we. Uh, but we always do like hearing what's coming up mm -hmm. and anything in the future, what, what kind of changes? I mean, you have it pretty well down to a science now, but I know that you're always, you're always reaching forward, uh, thinking, what can we do better? What, what is, what's coming up that you can do better that we can help you with? Thank you. We are always looking for more pilots uh, to make mm -hmm. sure we fill those missions. We always are looking for more passengers to know about what we do. Uh, and, and, and certainly donations make, make the oil you know, in, in the engine really go. But it's interesting, I did just speak to the people next door at Stein 51, who are the Hurricane Hunters, and they said we're in for another big season. Mm. Uh, that's, not, that's a challenge. Yeah, That's absolutely. a challenge. Uh, where are these uh, typically, where's your highest congregation of pilots? It, would it be the metropolitan area? I mean, Orlando, uh, in the southeast, Atlanta? Uh, where, where, I mean, if you had to, to, to lump in where you were strongest, if, if you know where you're strongest, you know where you're weakest. I think that's why we're so blessed, is that there's, at, at just about every airport in the U.S., there's an angel flight pilot. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if there wasn't, they can move and, and fly within five or ten minutes to give it a pick up that, that, that sick passenger right next to their house so they don't have to make that hour, hour and a half trek to the commercial airport, wait online, go through TSA, uh, you know, wait at the gate. I mean, we pick them right, you know, within a mile or two of, of their home, get them right into that airplane. General aviation, thank goodness for well, general aviation. It, it's a network. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and we also have earth angels that help transport these patients if they don't have transportation. 
So for example, if we drop someone off for medical reasons, normally the pilot will wait until after the appointment to fly them back. But if they have a job and they have to get back, there's an earth angel that will take them to their appointment, a doctor's appointment, so we look for them also, and then bring them back to the airport so they can be flown back home again. So it's very well oiled the way it works. Well, see, that's, uh, you know, now I'm just blown away because, uh -huh. you know, just when you think you know it all, uh -huh. I, I've not heard the term Earth Angel. Ah, that's something uh, we're working on. So that's because actually logistically, you stop to think about it, it's great. You uh, jump through all the hoops, uh, the, the flaming firing hoops mm -hmm. to get the, uh, the patient, the passenger there. Then what happens? Right. You know, unless they got somebody on the receiving end, uh, you know, if, if they're in, in, in dire strait, I mean, if they really, if timing is right. critical, do you have an ambulance meet them or what? I mean, right. how do they get to the hospital? And a lot of them don't have family members, so the Earth Angel becomes their friend and we become their friend. We get that mission probably a month prior to it flying and we communicate with that patient over and over again on the phone to make sure they're okay so when we do pick them up we kind of form a relationship with them and usually once you grab one one patient we'll end up flying that patient over and over again and become their personal pilot for that flight mm -hmm. that happens a lot and you know I, i'll be honest with you i get just as much out of it as they do when oh. i drop them off and they tell me thank you I, sure. You have no idea. I, I have to look at them and say, no, I get more out of it than you do. No, believe thank, it or not. thank you for letting me fly. Yeah, and thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. And we have a lot of generous people that have helped us too. Right now, I'm in the fundraising mode because of the hurricanes, and you just told me it's going to get worse. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. boy. So we're going to keep doing that and trying to raise money so that we're able to handle it. And the reason I'm saying that is because we had to lease airplanes for Puerto Rico mm -hmm. because a single engine airplane going over the ocean for that long, you don't want to, you know, it's, it's a little bit dangerous. So we leased the jets and things of that nature. So anybody that could help out, we surely would appreciate it. Well, and the, uh, how do your earth angels fit into your network? Do they call you or how do they respond if somebody wanted to help out on the ground. Great, so uh, the pilots receive from that great software I was talking about a list of all of the missions in and out of your airport coming up, in and out of your area coming up, and all the rest. And that, that email goes out every night at, at 5 p.m. The drivers, if they sign up as an Earth Angel, will get the same. Mm -hmm. And so that they can click on that and choose that, that mission to be able to take them that, that final mile. Mm. Steve, what did we do before the internet? Yeah, I know. I mean, it was just phone call. I have a book in my office, what we did. <laughs> it's an <laughs> old book, uh, you know, on a kitchen table where Mary Webb, 34 years ago, was, was you know, using an analog phone and a, and a piece of paper. Wow. Yeah. And just uh, butcher, 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 uh, butcher paper and a, and a pencil. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, wow. The, uh, okay, and again, where we're going with this, this is all internet-based, and I know you have a smartphone. Uh, tablets, iPads in the aircraft. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's showing you the, the path, mm -hmm. uh, XM weather. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've got all this technology that's working to our advantage. How can it get any better? What, what is the next step? Well, you know, even the, uh, the waivers that we used to sign, and, and I know you like to talk about safety on, on the network. So one of the things that we do ask is that each of those passengers signs a waiver of, of liability before they get on that flight. And it used to be kind of tough when you're at this podunk airport and you've got a piece of paper and what do you do with it? You can't take it in a plane with you. So uh, some of the pilots would, you know, mail it or hand it to the FBO to fax. Well, now they can take out their handy dandy smartphone or iPad and signature right on there and boom, the, you know, the, the signature goes right in. So we, we really make sure that we take care of the pilots and, and any of their mm -hmm. concerns that they may have and technology, you know, really helps solve that. Well, and I noticed that the ground-based, uh, the cell towers, anytime you've got cell service, yeah. you're in touch with the world. That's correct. Right. Uh, and it's, it's kind of interesting because we used to think that it's, it's all satellite. Satellite. If you're not satellite-based, you're nothing. Right. Uh, not so much anymore. Right. I mean, because uh, we've got so much that's available to us on the ground as far as ground repeaters mm -hmm. and the microwave system is... Mm -hmm. it, it's just broadband is just it, it's all over the place right. Right. Uh, 
everything's changing. But one thing that is, I'm glad that it's not changing, is the the personal uh, desire to help one another. It's there, and it's. Uh, the, the feel-good stories that you get. Uh, I, I love watching news when it's about something happy. <laughs> you get so tired of watching the news and or hearing news of it's always usually something bad and people just hear about bad things happening. But right. that's why with you guys, I like to hear about. And there's some there's some sad moments. I know it's it's just part of it's the nature of your beast. Mm -hmm. But uh, on the other hand, I'm probably 95, 98 percent. Are all happy, happy uh, actions, happy rewards, happy outcomes. I mean, that's that's what really drives your operation. And that's why these guys are, are heroes. I mean, they're not. Yeah. He's not only you know doing something financially to help us out, but he's he's a busy guy. He's still working, and he takes the day off from work to be able to do it. And it kills mm -hmm. it kills a whole day to be able to do a mission. So, yeah. um, and we're celebrating uh, guys like Heath on on Friday. At our pilot awards gala in uh, River Ranch this year. River Ranch. Yep. Okay. Yep. Anybody so know where River Ranch is on Highway 60? In the middle of nowhere. It's, <laughs> but it's a beautiful okay. place. Uh, they would get this information on your website. Yeah. I'm and sure. at angelflightse.org. Yeah. Se right. is for Southeast. Angelflightse.org. Angelflightse.org. Can I make one more comment? One more. S one more. Steve said to me a long time ago, "No patient will be left behind." This guy has gone out, and if the weather's really bad. He's able to obtain a ticket on a commercial flight to make sure that that person gets medical care. So well, whatever mean, it takes. Yeah, he did everything possible to never leave anybody behind. And congratulations, we try, we try. Chris, you did a great job. Thank you. Well, good. And guys, I, I really, I really do, uh, I really do think that uh, you got something here, and it's, I think it's going to grow. <laughs> Ben, we appreciate you and yeah. Ovi and the Florida <laughs> Aviation Network yeah. so much for helping us to get Thank the word out. So much. Thank You're you so quite much. You're quite welcome. Thank you for your time and your efforts and your time. Mm -hmm. And uh, keep this up. You might get good at it someday. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try. Oh boy. Well, anyway, we're uh, we're going to sign off from the from Steve and Keith from the Angel Flight Southeast uh, org. Go on the website. Go buy a ticket to get a uh, a raffle ticket over at Stallion Fifty One. Help these guys out, and you might get an hour of ground and an hour of flight in a P-51 with either Lee or one of his totally, totally competent guys and gals over there. Uh, KT, uh, Angela, thanks for your help. And let's uh, go sign off for this interview session, and we're going to uh, come up with somebody else to talk to that's going to be informative and educational. Thank you.